Hello, it is only Oracle here today with a pick a card reading. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. So today's question is what is your first date with your future spouse like? I know you guys enjoy spouse readings. They seem to be the most popular and I completely understand why. I too would want to know everything about the person I'm going to marry. So we're going to look at your first date, and I'm kind of going to structure this a little differently, but I will explain that at each of your readings. Uh, today we have four piles. Pile one, pile two, pile three, and pile four. You can take a minute, see which pile calls to you, and then when you're ready, you can jump to your timestamp in the description box. I will see you at your reading. Bye. Okay, hello pile one. If you chose the frog spirit, then this is your reading. Now, as I said in the intro, I am structuring this a little differently. We're going to look at the romance angels to get a general idea of what your date is like. And then I'm going to have two piles on either side. Uh, one is going to represent you and the other your future spouse or vice versa. Uh, kind of flip it around to see which seems to fit you more and which seems to fit them more. And we are just going to go through the date as best we can. We'll just see what messages come through. Um, when I do readings like these, it's often that there is not an exact... <laughs> Well, let's put it this way. There's not an exact science to it. And spirit lets me see what spirit lets me see. So we will see what I can see. But let's just get a general energy. And I feel like it is this. Passion. Okay. Well, we're starting off strong. And then I'm going to go for the archetypes. And again, you are going to be on the left-hand side. Your future spouse will be on the right. But um, feel free to switch them around if that's how you end up reading it so so yep that's you and the future spouse future spouse for their first okay your future spouse has two we're gonna keep both okie dokie all right and kind of move these up here so <laughs> your first date is passionate okay um you have the passion card which you cannot not get a better indicator for the first date i think with this clear out the clutter the frog spirit i feel as if both of you have been manifesting each other or manifesting this date it uh it in some ways feels like a long time coming so this could be someone you're kind of been crushing on uh, but even if you don't know them yet or whatever the case is, it's like both people are excited to be, I'm feeling excitement. You're both excited to be going on this first date together. Um, yeah, some of you may do something with your pets or go to a zoo or something that involves animal or wildlife. I do get that kind of vibe, like a park or something. Um, but that's just for some of you or a museum or the beach. Or you could go to the beach together. But okay, so this first date... Both of you are into each other from this jump. So whatever happened before this first date, I don't I had don't have an indication of what led up to your first date. I just have this is your first date. So for your first date, you're both very excited. You're both very into each other. You're looking forward to this date. Obviously, I would hope if this is your future spouse, but it is especially potent for on both ends. So it's not as if one person is going into this um, kind of half-hearted. You know what I mean? You're both going into this first date very intentional is the word you're going into this first date intentional with one each other you you both know i feel like you both know what's at stake because you've obviously felt some sort of connection before you go on this date that you don't want to risk messing it up i'm, I'm feeling also a hesitancy energy of not wanting to uh, make the wrong jump or the wrong move and mess things up with each other so on your end, or again, feel free to switch these around as you feel, see fit, but I'm just going to, and basically I'll be saying this is you and this is them, but please, please, please feel free to switch them. So for you, I am feeling that you are very 
empathetic and um, that you've been hurt before. So this date is... I feel like it's kind of a stretch for you. Not that you're not excited, not that you don't see potential here, but I just feel the energy of someone who has been hiding or sort of reticent, not quite uh, open to go on a date up until this point. I think in particular, something about this person uh, sparks the idea of a date. And again, you can always switch this around. So if this doesn't sound like you, then this would be your spouse. But so this person has been feeling kind of, you've been feeling... I don't think you've been dating very much. Like, I feel like you've just kind of receded into your hobbies or the things you enjoy, or you just have been really talking with nature or into spirituality, and not a lot has gone on on the dating field. So going on this first date, I do feel a a bit of fear that this person could potentially hurt you um, because you're unsure. And also, I'm just getting this, if this is you and you're female watching this, another part could be, you know, going on first dates with, with men in particular can feel rather daunting because they can be dangerous. So um, I do sense a sort of a ready to run away at first sign of trouble for this person. And again, I'm assuming this is you, but. Now on the other end, if this is the masculine or the other person, or you can switch it, this person, <laughs> your future spouse, I'm sorry, I'm giggling because like your future spouse is fired up, okay? Your future spouse is represented by the goddess and the hero heroine. I personally feel this goddess card popping out is representing how your future spouse views you, guy or girl, doesn't matter. Your future spouse is impressed by you, to say the least. So the idea of going on this date with you is... um it's, it's exciting, but I'm also getting like titillating where they may be um, very sexually aroused by you and your appearance and how, or your energy that they are. I mean, I do hear they're kind of hoping to get lucky on this first date, even if you're not the type of person to sleep with someone. They, it's not that they're going into the date with the intention of having sexual relations, but like, you know, they wouldn't be mad if that's where it ended up. I'm like smiling because your person is uh, very, very happy to be going on a date with you. I don't know if they, who asked who out or how long it took, but it seems like this person who's ever on this end asked out you or asked you out, asked the person on this other end out. Um, and you know what? I'm going to switch this and I'm just, be I'm sorry to do this part way through the reading because I know I've already started, but it's because I'm not sure who is who, I feel like I'm just going to designate this side. So the left side is person A and the right side is person B. And you can assign the roles and that will just be a lot easier on my end. So anyway, so person B, this is person B. And if you're person A, you're person A, this is person B. So person B is very excited to go on this date. Person B really views person A as being very, um, just something about person A is seductive to this, um, to your future spouse, to person B. And yeah, they've um they have a definite and passion comes up here again with the hero and heroine card. So I feel like this is I don't I feel like this future this future spouse person B has been planning this date or has planned to take you out for a while but wasn't able to ask it or hasn't gotten around to like doing it. It's, it's a lot of planning here. I don't feel anything about this being super spontaneous. It is something where this person B has noticed um, person A for a while and has wanted to go on a date. Yeah, and it's just, it, it's like, are we are we doing this? Are we getting together? Um, so there's a lot of excitement. All right, let's, let's move on. So now that we got the energy, let's see a bit about what the date is like. What is Pio One's date like with their future spouse? It's weird because I still feel the divide here. So even though these four cards came out together, I do feel one person. It's it's weird because you guys sort of mirror and match one another, which you often find with future spouses or, you know, people who are uh, soulmates. But it's like one of you is very patient. And I feel like this is more person A or you, you know, uh, is more patient. And it feels like person B is more uh, outgoing and ready to take the leap of faith into this relationship. Likewise, one person seems like their emotions have been like they've been hurt before. I told you this person A or you have been hurt before. And so the idea of jumping into a relationship and getting super emotional or uh, uh, committed really fast or 
uh, leading up to a relationship from a date is very, you know, it's kind of like, mm, do I feel that way? Am I ready for that? And, um, yes, but person, person, person B out here is just ready with this ace of cups and this fool, which I feel like is their energy is ready to jump in. So this is definitely a date of opposites and you might not very much feel in sync because I feel one person is more shy and nervous and the other person is just like ready to jump into this date. But let's see a little more about the date. The date. I have one's date with their future spouse. Yeah, you see complexity. Like th there's this, um, this first date, it's, it's, um, <laughs> I think this is definitely a case of not even quite opposites attract, but like puzzle pieces come together. But it's sort of like figuring out what pieces of you guys fit together. So maybe they plan the date at like a, I can just see this for some reason. They plan the date at like a sports game or something and you're not a fan of sports. Or um, what else do I see here? You know, it's just something where like they have a plan, but it doesn't match. Or maybe they plan to take you, this is random, but mud wrestling. And you're like, I would never... <laughs> mud wrestle in my entire life so there's definitely an idea of person a this person over here having to step out of their comfort zone because person b is pushing them to do so and um i don't even think person b is doing this consciously or trying to push you out of your comfort zone or make you uncomfortable it's just that they have a lot of passion for life and passion for you and i think they want to see you in a lot of different circumstances like they want to see you living life and so naturally they uh they seem very active too. this person over here. So person B is very active. And so they want to see something challenging. Yeah, the animal like they want to, they want this to be um, challenging. I am seeing a lot with the outdoors. So it does seem like this date has something to do with outdoors, whether you're ice skating, or you're going to the pool, or you're going, um, gosh, to the zoo, or Anything that has to do with some uh, physical activity, but also nature in the outdoors seems like it is very prominent for your first date. Um, I'm weirdly getting, if you've seen that movie on Netflix, it's a new one with uh, Nina Dobrev. It's, it's called Love Hard, and the the guy, she gets catfished, basically, which is not what I'm saying is happening here for your first date, but she goes on a date with the guy she really wanted to go out with to begin with, and he takes her, he takes her rock climbing, because he's really active and into the outdoors, and then the next date, he takes her bobsledding, and she's, like, not that kind of person, but he takes her to do all of those things, and it's comical, because it's, like, she's struggling with it, because she's not outdoorsy, and she's trying to pretend to be, and I feel like that is the energy of your date in some ways, not where you're necessarily faking how you're feeling, because I don't get the energy of person A faking how they feel on this date, but just the energy that person B is kind of just, like, yeah, like, let's go rock climbing, let's, let's get an ATV and go dirt biking, you know, like, let's do something very active, and person A is, like, um, yeah, about that. I am a little more, you know, I'm a little more sit at home with a cup of tea. I'm a little more nice, you know, leisure nature walk. I'm not really a jump into the activity kind of gal. So I think this is definitely challenging for person A to go on this date. And it may not go quite according to plan because I also think person A or you, again, we were saying this is you, um, doesn't isn't used to activity. Like, is it not that you're not used to physical activity, but isn't used to these kinds of things. <laughs> I'm laughing. This is so comical. Yeah. Definitely someone is more uh, active or outdoorsy and very uh, go-getter, and that might just not uh, sit very well initially with the other person. And I think part of this is person A, or you, um, likes to get to know people. I'm getting the energy of whoever person A is likes to get to know people on this on first dates. They maybe would prefer to sit down at a coffee shop or a restaurant and talk and really st start to understand someone. And it's funny because you both have the same idea. I think person B feels the same way. They like to get to know someone. But while person A likes to get to know someone through conversation and talking, person B likes to get to know someone through action and situations. So this first date, person B definitely takes the, the lead and uh, wants to get to know you through action to get to know you through taking you to an amusement park or um you know kayaking or going down the river or walking on the beach or something that is not what person a would consider get to know each other first date material 
<laughs> it's so funny. But there's a lot of passion. So I, I feel like even if this date doesn't turn out well, there's something about it that's like, uh, I don't, even though this might not have been how I would have chosen a first date, I'm willing to try another date or I'm willing, I do get that at the end of this, you're, you may kind of think, is this another, like, should we go on another date? But you'll be willing to try it. Yeah, you see, okay, you have all these reversals. So you have the magician in reverse, the star in reverse, and the princess of pentacles in reverse. Yes. Um, specifically, I know I said person A and person B, and I know I've been jumping around a lot. Hopefully it hasn't been too confusing. But I feel specifically if you are the feminine in this, um, your masculine is, is going to take you on a wild ride. <laughs> um, and I feel like this is the masculine also showing off his lifestyle. I do get the idea, although it hasn't been said in any of the cards particularly, I get the idea that the masculine is rather well off financially. Um, and because he does so well, he likes to enjoy the finer things in life. So even if maybe you don't get all outdoorsy, maybe he takes you to a restaurant, person B would take you to a restaurant, or she, you know, gender, I'm not, it just is easier to say it that way, but it's not specific to that. Um, would take you out to like a very fancy restaurant that doesn't really suit who you are. Again, there's just this idea of person B, in some ways trying to impress person A, but also get to know person A through situations. And person A is like, I'd rather get to know you through low key manner. I don't want, we don't have to do all this crazy stuff. Very, very comical energy. Yeah, this date does not, um, your first date, I'm not going to say it goes badly. I'm just going to say it doesn't go according to plan. I think that's the main thing. It does not go according to plan. And, um, yeah, someone, I, I just feel a, we don't feel like we quite understand each other yet, even though we have this attraction. And I think the attraction is what gets you to date too, because even if this date doesn't go very well because you're different or because how you approach dates, first dates are, uh, is a bit different, you get to the second date because I think you still have a attraction to each other. Like even at the end of this date, there's still a attraction that is wanting to be explored. I also think this relationship is very divinely guided in the sense of um, the divine wants you two to be together. So even if it doesn't go well, you're still going to go on date two. Yeah. And um, you may kiss at the end of the night. I do see that that could be a potential for a lot of you. For most of you, I don't think you get physically intimate. If you do, the, the person B is very excited about that, but you may not. A lot of you, I see a first kiss, but some of you, I feel not even a first kiss because you're like, I don't know how I felt about this date. I'm just getting an energy of, I don't know how I feel about this. Like this person, person B really, uh, is really attracted to you and would want to kiss you at the end of the night and like would want to sleep with you if possible but person a is like i what did i just get myself into what did i just uh go about i also get the energy that person a is more of a watcher you like to take your time before doing things and person b is a go-getter just do it so person b will just jump into something without even knowing all the facts and person a is like hold on I need to know where we're going, what we're doing, uh, you know, what shoes I need to wear. Like, there's a very, um, a different energy in both of you, but I think you guys really do complement each other. So um, if you have watched other future spouse readings and you've heard that your future spouse is more of a thinker, you know, very, more, very patient and, and less action oriented, then you'd probably be person B. But if you've done other spouse readings and you found that your future spouse is supposed to be more of like a go-getter, active, um, decisive kind of individual, um, then, then that would be the person you're going on a date with. Okay, so that is all I'm seeing. I really probably could go into more depth, but uh, I like to leave some to the imagination because part of the fun of falling in love and meeting your future spouse and dating your future spouse is letting it unfold naturally. So as much as I love these pick a cards, as much as I would love to give you every single little insignificant detail you could possibly think of, I think it's best to give you a general idea of how this is going to go and then let you just explore that, that for yourself. So that's all I'm seeing for you guys, Pile 1. If you enjoyed this reading, be sure to comment down below if it resonated, if you did have a bad first date. Maybe you're already married and you're watching this. I don't know why you would be, but maybe you are. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Okay, hello, Pile 2. If you chose the Buffalo Spirit, then this is your reading. 
before we even get started, you may have picked the channel love letter of the Buffalo Spirit. I found it funny that this card, when I picked out piles for pile two, it fell out again uh, for the pile number two specifically. That was kind of crazy to me, but even if you didn't, we're going to be taking a look at your future spouse. Now, as I said in the previous piles, we are going to get the general energy of your date with the romance angels, and then I will be dividing it into um, your energy and your future spouse's energy on the date, and we'll see what comes through. Um, so partway through reading part uh, pile one, I had decided that I was just going to call this side the left side person A, which would be you. And then this right side will be person B. That would be your future spouse. And um, again, that's the idea is that you're on the left, they are on the right. But if that does not resonate, then feel free to switch it around, okay? Because oftentimes these things can get mixed up. And so to ensure that like you, you would know which one is you, I assume. So we're looking at pile two's first date with their future spouse. I feel like it's that one new love okay so that's very clear uh whoever this for the first date with your future spouse is someone i don't i don't think you know yet um or you are not aware of yet it's definitely not anyone you know um if you've picked a previous pile in my other future spouse readings it says it's someone you may know it's like maybe again it could still be someone who went to the same school as you or something but you never actually talked but i'm getting the uh, idea that you don't know this person so um, this is a whole fresh new date and a fresh new, I feel like a fresh new chapter of your life. So let's see your energy or person A. Okay, this is person A, your energy, and then we're going to look at person B. Person B, their future spouse. So weird. Slave. Okay. We're just going to take that one. Okay. Wow. Um, <laughs> can we just say that you and your future spouse have strong sexual energy? Okay. We have virgin and slave. And need I say more? Um, I automatically kind of get a BDSM vibe from this pile. This is not a sexual reading, but you know, it comes through. You guys are very, very sexual and if you're not a sexual person with this virgin like or you are a virgin because this could i this is person a but i i'm assuming person a is representing your energy if you are a virgin or you just haven't been very sexually active this is gonna awaken the beast okay <laughs> okay so this first date let's get into this so this is someone new obviously we've established someone new someone you haven't met yet more than likely or you don't know of but maybe knows of you and person A, or you, again, take it as it comes, um, you have been celibate for a while. That's coming through very clearly. You have, um, I don't think person A or you have, has uh, dated very much. I'm not getting the sense of someone who has gone out very much, has had many relationships, if any relationships at all. You may have had one or two, maybe three max, but you're, this is not someone who has uh, put their heart out on the line. You see how she's covering herself? Your heart has been very protected and you've protected your heart. Likewise, this could mean that you have engaged in a lot of sexual relationships, but your heart has always been protected. So this is someone with a very protected heart. Going into this date, that is the same energy, um, a very innocent energy here an innocent heart and spirit which also m makes for a very kind person so I get a very giving kind person here going on to the date with pile number with pi pile two with person b now person b is um smitten there's no other way to put it person b is smitten with person a person b is putty in person a's hand okay so if you identify as person a which is supposed to be you um yeah, your future spouse is putty in your hands, okay? You could get this man, woman, this person to do anything you wanted with a flick of your wrist, okay? You could say, go get me 50 cheeseburgers, and this person be like, okay, I'll go get you 50 cheeseburgers. I will be right back. <laughs> like, this this person is... Um, completely enamored with person A. And I also get person B is very, um, also very kind. And um, 
this new relationship completely surrendered to the idea of it. So um, person B, you know, person B is smitten. Let me, let me get one more for this person because like, it's like person B doesn't have a choice. Yeah. Okay. It's like person B and I have rescue at the bottom of the deck. I felt like that was important. So it's like person B doesn't have a choice in this. Like person B has been so influenced by the divine or by this connection that person, person B, your future spouse, I will alternate between the two. I'm sorry if I'm mixing this up and this is you, but, um, your future spouse is gone. Like, you know, they would, I mean, if you if you want to talk about, um, people say like, love at first sight, or he's a goner, that is your future spouse. They are gone. They are gone for you. Gone, gone, gone. And Samaritan, like your future spouse, I already said, right, that they're very kind. This person is very kind and giving. And I feel like they've, they already have, they already see how pure person A is or how pure you are, that they are ready. Like they're, I don't, something about this date is like whatever you want and not whatever you want like I don't want to plan something it's just like whatever you want like do you want do you want a 50 carat diamond ring let's go get you one you know do you want to go um ride uh, bumper carts together let's go so whatever you want person a this person b is your future spouse is ready ready to give it they're like okay you want to fly across the country right now let's go you know um with this, I do feel like they are very willing to go anywhere. And I do also get their financially well off once again. It just seems like future spouses. I mean, I know my uh, watchers are predominantly women. So and most of the time they're looking for men and, um, you know, generally they're well off financially, you would hope. So anyway, let's get more. Okay. Okay. Do you have anything else? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so person B really wants to take the load off of you. Um, or person A, both of you. Both of you want to... I'm seeing this kind of funny thing where you both don't want to say what you want because you don't want to inconvenience the other person on this first date. Um, you want to make sure that you're both enjoying it. But by trying to ensure that you both enjoy it, it's like you're not really making decisions, per se. Um... And I think this is reminiscent for someone of a previous relationship for some reason. Not that you're, even if you haven't been in a previous relationship, maybe like a previous situation that you've been in where I don't know who, let's see, who, let me ask, who is it? Okay, person A. So person A, I said you may be a virgin or you may not have been in relationships, but I do feel you've been hurt before, which is why you protect your heart so heavily. And I think going into this first date, you are, um, how do I say this? You're a little blocked to the connection because, um, I think you feel an intense attraction to this person B, but that's also a little scary because it's like, that means I'd have to open up my heart and you've spent so much time protecting your heart, right? Defending your heart, making sure no one's taken advantage of it or you that, uh, the idea of letting all that go of just, uh, being open to this person who is genuinely good is a bit scary. I also think person A, you're very, um, you're very attractive. You're very, uh, sought after generally. And so you may be used to offers, but even if you're not used to offers, I think this person is so sincerely in love with you. So sincerely in love with you. Like it's not, there's no games here. This person is not playing games. Person B is not playing games. Person B is in it. Person B is in it for the long haul. Person B is ready. Person B is willing. And person B is a genuinely good person. And I don't know if, if person A is used to encountering people like that. So maybe a little bit of like, unnecessary defensiveness but only from previous experiences where you don't think you can trust someone because how can someone be so genuine and kind and upfront and like that's who they are so I don't know if person a you know you have been tricked in the past by a previous partner or person who has pretended to be something but you found out they weren't that thing but this person is genuinely a good person you don't have to worry about that like I let me yeah like, it's very clear this is just a good person. This is a good person. And it just keeps coming through so clearly that they are a good person. But that person A is a little bit going into the state. You're a little apprehensive. You're a little blocked because you have had bad experiences 
clearly why your heart is protected or even if you haven't bad it had have even bleh, even if you haven't had bad experiences you may be afraid to have a bad experience or to have your heart broken and i think this is a very strong connection yes i'm hearing it is a very strong connection that there may be a lot of fear especially in this person a if this is you again you may be person b or you're just you're you're the good person surrendering into this relationship automatically but i do feel more like you are person a where you're a little more cautious you're a little less ready to um just put your heart out there to anyone, you know, you've taken a lot of time to gather your own strength and your own resources. And you're not just ready to surrender your heart up or, you know, on a platter to some new person, to someone you don't know very well. And this is obviously this first date with this person. This is someone you don't know very well, because it's a new love. This isn't someone you have whether or not you've had past life relationships, I'm not going to speak on, but this isn't someone in this lifetime that you know very well. So, um, I also think maybe you don't date, maybe you only have dated friends or something like that. So there's just a lot of hesitancy in this date. And let's see about that. Let's see about this hesitancy. Because I am sensing that with this person A, if it's you, that there's, there's an excitement, there's I mean, not even excitement. There's like a, there's almost like a, just a sadness tinge with this because you think this is too good to be true. Um, this person is kind. This person is probably financially well off. And it's just kind of like, are we sure I'm not being tricked right now? Right? Like, are we sure this isn't the universe playing me for another lesson? And they are saying no, that when, the, when you meet this person, um, I'm just arranging these cards real quick. Okay, that when you meet this person, it is very clear right away that they are a good person. So um, they, this is not a person who is uh, mean. Yeah, no, I mean, some of them may come off a little brusque, a little honest, but not mean. This is someone you would have known is to be very kind from the get-go, but this is also genuinely who they are. They're just genuinely a kind person. I keep getting that over and over again. I know this is your first date, but your future spouse... I think spirit wants you to know that it's okay to trust when this kind person comes in because they're genuinely kind. They're not doing this to um, manipulate or take advantage of you. In fact, I feel the person B feels manipulated and taken advantage of by you because they're so um, they're so enamored by you. They're so into you, um, very very into you. And so there's one person here on the state, and I'm not getting the specifics of the date where it's at or things like that, but I am getting that there's one person on the state, person B, who is ready to flow with this, who is ready to, again, they're already surrenders of the connection. They're in love. I mean, they're, they may not say that right away, but I would say person B is already in love. They are in love. They, there's, bleh, like, you know, nothing. There's nothing to hold this back. There's nothing in their mind that says this is not it. They are completely and utterly surrendered to your love, to being in love with you, to being with you and only you. And they know you're, they know you're, um, this, I want you to admit that this future spouse, person B, knows that you are protected of your heart, that you're not quite, um, ready to just put yourself out there. And they respect that, but they also are, they're also, I'm hearing not willing to wait. So they're not willing, they're willing to wait for you in some ways, but they're not willing to wait on spending time with you. You know, this is your first date. So this person is not willing to wait on, getting to know you like they want to be closer to you that's why I hear I want to be closer to you and so um you may be a little reticent but something about this obviously you, you say yes to the date and um they are yeah they're very much in flow with the universe and they just trust this so much they trust loving you so much and you my little friend or person a if this is not you person a is a challenger person a is a. Uh, a little bit uh, apprehensive. I think person A has some thoughts or some, um, I, I really feel a past experience in particular that has hurt person A enough to not really, you don't want to jump into anything right away. You want to take your time and see if this is something that's worth pursuing. And um, yeah, I, I see someone who wants to take the long way around. Like you don't want to just jump into this. You're not ready to just commit to a relationship. You really want to take your time to know the character of person A or person B and see if this future spouse or this person is genuine to how they're saying they are. You know, are do your words match your actions? And um, that creates a little bit of grit because I think in some ways it's as if person B may feel like, well, you don't trust that I'm genuine. And I know you've been hurt before, but I am genuine. You know, there's a little bit of like, I don't 
trust you. And they're like, well, why shouldn't you trust me? I'm, I've been, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be, oh my God, look at this. I pop this open. And I have the lovers. Yeah, this is like a soulmate. This first date that you have, I mean, this is your future spouse, but this date is a soulmate. This is, um, yeah, this is, whew, this is divine. This may even be a, I don't like to say it, but this may be a twin flame. Let's see some more about this first date for pile number two. First date for pile number two. I feel like I'm having to drag this out. So the divine is keeping this, I feel, specifically under wraps. Um, you know, if you go to another pick a card reading and they give more information that seems to suit you, then go for that because, uh, I give what I hear and sometimes it's not much. Sometimes I feel like I'm pulling teeth, you know? Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna keep these. Yeah, I think... Okay, I am hearing for this date, um, person B, whoever this is, is not going to say all of this, okay? So all I've told you about how they are ready to marry you, they're ready to jump in, they're very committed, they're blah, 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 blah. They're not going to say any of that. <laughs> they will not say any of that on that for, on this first date. Um, with this buffalo spirit, the abundance universe will provide. I also feel like this is very tied to my, um, if you haven't watched it, I'll link it in the description box, my... Um, channeled love letter from your future spouse this feels like it's the same person but you know maybe it's not but maybe it is and they just want you to be sure um they may not say this okay they may not um they may not tell you all that they're thinking all that they feel all that they've done um because i think they prefer to show their 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 feelings through actions so and this is a very patient person. This is not someone in abundant. Okay, I am getting this person is very well off financially. Um, so this person is not going to, person B is not going to um, put any, like they're not going to force it. They're not going to force you to fall in love with them. They're just going to show you that they are who they say they are. That's their way of telling you they love you is I will show you who I am. You'll see through each circumstance that we go through. And... For you, person A, I think you're very virtuous. You're very pure. You're very pure of heart, mind, spirit. Like, you're just a very pure individual. Doesn't matter what you've gone through. You still have a very loving heart, but you may have just kind of closed it because you don't want it to get hurt. And because it is so loving, it can easily be taken advantage of. So, but person A is um, you. Seems like you're a bit more of a talker. So you will be a little more honest and forthcoming about how you're feeling. And so I do think this date has a lot of conversation Um and it's a lot more of person A talking and person B kind of listening. And um, person B likes to listen, so it's not a big deal. They're very enamored with you. But um, so this could really be anywhere. I do see kind of anywhere because it's just, it's a conversation. Your first date is a conversation and it is you, someone with a heavy guard, person A with a heavy guard, and person B being absolutely in love. Okay? There's probably more I could say, but... Yeah, the divine says leave it there. So um, I hope this gave you some insight into your first date with your future spouse. You will be talking and maybe you'll feel you you watch these a lot, but you're a little apprehensive about actually, you know, dating. And um, yeah, just know that this first date, you'll you'll talk a lot more than likely if you're person A or if you're person B, you'll listen a lot and that the conversation will, um, it will lead you, like it will lead you. And you don't, yeah, I hear you don't need to be afraid, okay? That's all I'm seeing for you guys. If you enjoyed this reading, comment down below and um, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Okay, hello, gorgeous pile number three. If you chose the armadillo spirit, then this is going to be your reading. Now, as I've said in the previous two piles, we are going to be looking at the energy of your date and then I'm going to be dividing this reading into a a person one, person A, which should be you on the left-hand side, and then person B, your future spouse, will be on the right-hand side. So um, person A, person B should be you and your future spouse, but if the energy comes through switch, then just switch it around. You know, there's no art to this per se that I'm doing. So let's look at the energy of your first date. All right, you guys have two come out. Getting to know each other and soulmate. Whew, all right. Let's get some more. 
do, do. So this left side we're going to start with is you or slash person A. I know it gets confusing because I kind of go back and forth between you slash person A, but just know the left is person A slash you and switch it around if you need to. So what is person's A energy for this first day? Yep. All right. So we have Messiah. Mm, okay. And then future spouse slash person B's energy. Yep. That too. For sure, that one, and then these are kind of just sides. Okay. So, let's start with your energy, overall energy of your date. All right, I am getting that this could be, um, I am getting like a virtual date, which is kind of weird. I haven't gotten that in the previous piles, but I am getting like a Zoom date or um, like a almost like a FaceTime first date, which is kind of different, but it could be anywhere. You could meet at each other's house, um, meet up at a house. I'm not getting too many other specifics for where the date could be, but I am getting um, surprisingly a season. I am getting winter time. So maybe your first date takes place in during the colder months. Or the day is just very cold. There's snow. It could be in the spring, but there's snow. I am getting snow. And um, yeah, I am getting like kind of a Christmassy vibe from this for the first date. So around Christmas. But that's just for some of you. I don't think that's everybody in this pile. And then soulmate. So this first date is confirming. I think this first date is confirming. Confirming a uh, held belief that both of you have that this is a soulmate so you're getting to know each other and I feel like as you guys talk or you hang out and you do things for this first date by the end of it you're you're I think by the end of the date you're like this is my person I found my person this is my person this is my soulmate this is the person I'm gonna marry there's not too much confusion after the date so let's start with you all right, I get the idea that you are a very giving individual and you are service oriented. So something you do services humanity. Automatically, I hear teacher. So you might be a teacher of sorts, a mentor. Um, maybe you're just a really good parent or you own your own business. But something about you helps uh, guide the way for people. Definitely guide the way for people to uh, the correct path. And that really can be any position or job, but it just came, kind of came through some of those job positions. So you are serving humanity with humility. And I think on this date, that is a quality that shines through most to your future spouse. So your first date might even be, which is very different. Your first date might be at a soup kitchen. I was getting kind of around Christmas. So maybe you're both volunteering. And this is kind of where you have your first date, which is an interesting place to have your first date for sure. And I'm not really getting, for some reason for this pie, I'm also feeling your first date. For the other two piles, it felt very much that they were going to be one-on-one, -on -one, like a formal date. Your first date's almost like um, a party or a group gathering. It's not, it's not um, a one-on-one -on -one occasion that you have. You're kind of what you would consider, if you go back to, I guess, your story once you're married, what you would consider your first date. It's not a one-on-one uh, -on -one kind of situation necessarily there's just something about other people being involved in this first date so maybe it's a group first date or something like that or maybe you meet at like a mixer or something of, or the other um but yeah all right so we got person a over here that's the teacher kind giving volunteering and we have person b over here um person b is a i'm hearing polygot and polymath so they may have specialization in lots of different subjects um, this is a person who could have a very advanced degree or um, just really has uh, multiple income streams I'm also hearing uh, they just do a lot this person does a lot so whoever person B is either you or your future spouse this seems to be more your future spouse but for this pile I'm feeling it's a little more split down the middle so you will know which one identifies more with you but um, you this Second person is definitely more creative. Person B uh, 
really does a lot. That's what I'm just hearing. They do a lot. So it would be hard to encompass a day to day for this person, because, again, they could have multiple income streams where they make money from multiple things that they do. They could be artists. They could be painters. They could be writers. They could be dancers. They could be actors. They could be singers. They could have their own business. They could um, also foster kids. They just do a lot. So it's very hard to pinpoint this person down. And I think that's part of why your first date may involve other people, because this person I'm getting this person doesn't have a lot of time. They don't have a lot of free time. So it's kind of like a two in one deal almost where I get the idea of you guys like volunteering or doing something. And it's kind of your first date because this person doesn't have a lot of free time to just uh, do nothing or to, you know, just leisurely stroll around. This person is very busy. Or likewise, if this is a one on one date, I am getting I, I got this with this in the background. Um, Hercules, I'm getting Hercules, you know how um, Hercules becomes a super mega hero or whatever. And he doesn't have any time he's supposed to go get a, a, a like a painting done. And then he has to go talk to his fans and stuff. And then um, Meg Megara Meg his love interest shows up and kind of steals him away for the day for some fun. That could also be the vibe of the date where um, you're, the first date is kind of like this person, person B being stolen away from all the busyness or sneaking away from all the responsibilities to spend time with person A. And again, person A is very kind and giving. And I just feel like, um, if you're person A, you have a little more time on your hands than this person B does. This person B just does a lot in their day that they just don't really, I mean, the fact that they, this is the only pile thus far to have three cards come out. And so they have this dilettante, which I'm being drawn to the most as explaining how many different things they are doing at once, or how many different things they are trying to do at once, mixed with this knight and this student that they are constantly learning and trying to gain more information, that their time is just very precious to them, I'm seeing. And um, they are very honest and loyal and romantic and all of those things, but it might get kind of lost behind all the things they feel like they have to do or should do it on a day to day. So this first date is either sneaking away from the crowd together to kind of get to know one another, or it is um, definitely with the crowd doing something to help humanity. Because what is clear for both person A and person B, you and your future spouse, is that you both are here to help humanity. You both are here to serve humanity. And that is very apparent. So while person A or person A may just kind of stick with uh, one thing or you just you don't you don't partake in so many different arts, you're more um, streamlining how you do things. Um, person B does a lot of things, but they're equally as giving where that is still the goal is to give back and to uh, spread awareness and knowledge. I definitely feel like they are a spreader of information, a communicator. They could be a public speaker. Um. And so, yeah, this first date is either at a party or with a group because this person just doesn't have the time to really sneak away or to get away or to give up their time initially. Or it is sneaking away from the group to spend some one one on one time together. But by the end of the date, I think you're both very clear about the fact that um, you have found your soulmate. You have found your person. Yeah. You see, I'm getting this person A, you are very giving, very, very, very giving. And um, so, yeah, okay. Part of your date is giving back in some way. And even if you don't particularly like go volunteer at a shelter or something like that, it could be anything like maybe you just pick up the trash that you see on the floor or you see a kid while you're on the date and you buy him an ice cream or there's just something about acts of kindness and being generous to humanity as a whole that's very important. Something else on the first date, you may pass by a homeless man or woman and you may either ask for their story, right, while you guys are together or maybe you guys decide to buy them a meal or give them your leftover meal. Something about this is you both are altruists. You're both um, humanitarians at heart, for sure. And that is the point where you connect. And I think that's how you figure out you're each other's soulmate. Yeah, and then something else I'm getting. Woo, okay. Um, something else I'm getting is that you're both... Um, with this nine of wands, you both have like this, this, um, this faith in what humanity can be. You both have a lot of faith in mankind. Not that you haven't seen mankind be awful, but you both have a lot of faith 
And that connects you guys together because you both want to do good in this world. I just get, this is a very, like, if you guys were going to found a non-profit together, you know, and, and work to lessen uh, poverty or food insecurity or housing insecurity or something like that, where you guys are just very giving. And that's where you, that's where your soulmates is like the way you give, the way you want to love and make this world a better place. And um, particularly person B is also just very into learning and understanding how the word world works. So that's something they frequently do. But anyway, with this nine of cups and the devil card together, I think during this date, yeah, you guys are uh, this is a pretty set date. Um, I, we're, regardless of what you do, if you're together in a group or if you sneak away by yourselves, um, once you're done with this date, yeah, I just see this being a done deal. Like date one is just, once you finish this date, you already know, like you're chained, you're already chained together. And I'm reviewing this devil as more of like the lovers, except with more uh, intensity and sexual energy. And um almost like you guys are here to right the wrongs of the planet, right? Like you're here to uh, right the things that, or um, give help to groups who haven't had help before. There's just a very kind um, giving energy here, which I think is why we also see this armadillo spirit is that when you're both such giving people, it's weird to um, never receive that. Like you're constantly both giving. And so this armadillo spirit with set healthy boundaries, I think you guys are each other's receptive point. You're the point where um, you can both give, but you actually receive something in return from each other. It's not just giving, giving, giving. Um, there's receptiveness and you may help each other to set boundaries. Um, yeah, I'm hearing someone say like, babe, you know, don't, don't do that. Like, I know you want to help, but like, you know, take a nap, like break, take a break, take a break. That's what I'm hearing. Take a break. Um, and I think you both do that for each other. You're both good at kind of keeping each other in check and saying, um, maybe that's too much. Like maybe you need to take a break and give to yourself because you're very giving people. But yeah, I think you guys, yeah, in each other, you just, it's, it's a wrap. I want to get a little more about this devil card. I just, I get a funny energy there. Okay, can I get one more for the devil in the... Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys are definitely going to work together after this date. I know I'm getting, this is supposed to be your first date with your future spouse, but I'm just getting your first date is, like I said, either you're um, with a group or you're volunteering or you're at a party of sorts. It's like there's lots of other people or it's a group date or you kind of sneak away from your responsibilities for a date. But at the end of the day, I do feel like you guys um, meet and connect. This is might help you with your meeting for this person because you meet and connect through um, your work and righting the wrongs. I'm just, I'm, I just keep getting that with this devil card and the nine of cups, righting the wrongs of society or righting the wrongs done by people who are marginalized or left uncared for. That's something you're both very passionate about. That's how you guys know your soulmates. And this first date, I think, really confirms it through um, not just your words, because I don't know if you guys, you guys might chat a lot, or talk about your hopes and dreams. I do see that. But I also think it's just through how you act on this date. Like I said, I see someone um, giving the rest of their meal to a homeless man on the street or buying a meal for a homeless man on the street or maybe just cleaning up the garbage that you see on the ground or, you know, um, helping the little lost boy find his parents. Like something about this just shows this first date shows how um, kind you guys are. Both of you. you it's, it's natural. It's very, very natural. You naturally come together. You guys are naturally soulmates. And this first date will um, just confirm it, really, um, no matter what you're doing, no matter where you're at, no matter who you're with, you can't hide how kind your heart is you can't hide how giving and um yeah just giving and intuitive and 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 optimistic about what what humanity can be I don't think you either of you can hide that so your first date you're going to see these qualities come out and yeah I think Um, I think that, yeah, I think after the first date, you'll be pretty sure that you guys are soulmates. But let's see if I can get anything else about your first date. Because I'm not getting too much about the specifics of it as much as like who you both are and how that will show. 
yeah, you guys, I just, why do I keep getting this volunteering? Like you're volunteering, helping someone with food or, um, and food is something big here. So I don't know if food insecurity is something you've dealt with or, or housing insecurity or like the basic needs not being met, but that's something I see here. Even again, with this six house craft, uh, health and wellness, um, this could be a date where you just like get very healthy food or you, you try and help people along the way while you're talking and getting to know each other. Um, and it could be in nature. I do get a nature vibe with the sixth house. Um, that's Virgo energy. So it's very practical. Your first date is kind of mixing work and play because I just think, again, this person, person B, whether that's you or your person A, person B is, uh, I'm sorry, person B is a little bit of a workaholic. So, um, work is always going to kind of mix in with play because I think what, what they define as work is like helping people, but not in a bad way where, um, it's like, Oh, it's such a drain to help people. It's like, no, but that's just what they want to do. That's what they feel like they were there. They, I feel like this person, person B person A too, you both have kind of found your life's purpose and life's mission. And so you want to do that. And, and when you find your life's purpose and life's mission, there really isn't too much of a need to take um, vacation time. And I feel like that's the case, especially with person B, where they don't really want to take a vacation from helping people from doing what they do. So uh, your first date will still incorporate parts of that in some way, shape or form, because they just have to I feel like this person is just like, I just have to help to people and person A is like this too. But I think person A is a little more willing to set things aside or set a boundary to go ahead and have this date. Whereas person B is kind of like, I have to keep helping. Like I, I want to keep giving, like I want to, you know, um, make sure that everybody is taken care of. So, but yeah, very strong attraction. This first date is, um, yeah, there's, I hear there's no need to really even be a plan because you just intuitively understand one another. You intuitively grasp each other and you're both each other's kind of wish come true. Your, your wish fulfillment for each other. Yes. Yes. Okay. Your wish fulfillment for each other. And you're very, very attracted to each other. And you're, um, you're very, very passionate about the world and your mission in this world and helping this world that they're just really, this first date is just confirming those things for you. And, um, either talking through a party or through whatever it may be, because I do get for a lot of you, this isn't one-on-one. -on -one. There's a group of people around, whether that's a party or a nonprofit meeting or something, but there's a lot of people around, but it doesn't matter because you know that you connect at the soul level. You guys have, you guys are soulmates who, you, you have the same thing and you get to know each other through, um, watching each other in situations and seeing how each person, how you deal with situations and how you deal with, uh, the public and other people. I think a big part of both of your guys's almost like love language is like acts of service or kindness and seeing how someone treats other people. So even just for instance, the waiter, even if you guys just go out to eat together or go out to eat with a group, you'll notice that both of you are very kind to the waiter. Both of you have manners. You don't say like, give me a salad. You know what I mean? You're like, can I have a salad, please? You know, you still have your manners and um, you both tip the waiter very well, you know? So there's just this constant like what is it like reaffirmation that you guys are both good people good good people thrown through and you see that in each other and you recognize that in each other in the first date through tons of little things like how they treat the waiter or um you know how they treat the random homeless person or the lost little kid or you know the uh the maybe I, I also get for maybe person b that they speak more than one language like i said they're a polygot like a polymath polygot um, so maybe they see someone struggling to, uh, converse in English and they step in to try and help them. You know, you just see all this altruism constantly throughout the course of the date that by the end of it, you're like, okay, that's a wrap. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this is the first I'm going to marry. This is my soulmate. And it's, uh, it's very natural from there. And there's also this strong attraction, this strong attraction and this strong need to right the wrongs of society. So yeah, that is all I'm seeing for you. I kind of ran a little over, but I hope you enjoyed the reading. If you did. Comment down below, you beautiful people, both you and your future spouse. You guys are going to do amazing things. You have amazing, amazing life purpose together. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Okay, hello, pile for Dolphin Spirit. If you chose a Dolphin Spirit, then this is going to be your reading for your first date with your future spouse. Now, I'm already getting something with this Dolphin Spirit, but before I get into that, I want to preface this by saying that I am looking at the energy of your first date, and then I will be dividing it into two parts. The left-hand side will be you, okay, or person A, um, and the right-hand side will be person B or your future spouse. Now, if you feel the energy are sw uh, is switched, that's why I'm putting it as person 
person A and person B rather than like you and your future spouse, although that's kind of what I'm doing. But if you feel like the energies are flipped, then just obviously flip the energies. Uh, there is no exact science to this where it needs to be exact. But right away with the dolphin spirit, I feel like this is a very fun date. I don't know. I get a very fun, colorful date. But let's see. What is the energy for Pile 4's first date with their future? Keep an open mind. Okay. All right. So I do feel like this is a very fun first date. But I'm also feeling like with this keep an open mind, it's... I am feeling it's challenging in some way. It's not, it's not like this and that are true. I don't know. I feel like that's a very important thing to keep in mind for your first date. This and that are true. Like two different things can be true. I don't know if you're, um, I do get kind of strong, uh, like dualism vibes. I get strong Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, Pisces energy. Sometimes those, those signs tend to come through very strongly for me a lot. And, um, yeah, I do feel this dualistic sense here where this and that are true, like two different things that seem contradictory can be true. So I don't know if something about your spouse is kind of like offbeat or different or um, something about the date is kind of different and offbeat. But let's see. Let's see what your energy or person A's person A energy first date. Oop, card fell. But we have virgin. Oh, my gosh. I got this in another pile. Okay. And... Yep. Lover. Whoa, this is some intense energy. Well, you got the dolphin. I mean, dolphins are all about the fun, but okay. Um, hoo -hoo -hoo. Hoo -hoo 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 -hoo. This may be an LGBTQ relationship. If that is, I do get that energy here. It doesn't have to be, obviously, but um, I got this for another pile. So if you felt drawn to pile two, I think it was, um, maybe take a look at pile two. But um, this is coming in again, but it's, it, it's it feels much stronger in this pile that you may be um, sexually abstinent or you may be a virgin. And by that, I mean you could have never had sex before or if you have had sex before, I just feel like it's been a long time since you've had sex or you've decided to try to remain celibate for a while. And um, so that's person A, okay? If that does not resonate for you, then you're probably this person, which is the lover, okay? So person B is your future spouse, or maybe you, is a romantic, okay? A romantic through and through. I think this is the person who will bring flowers on the first date or um, chocolates or some type of gift, even if you're a girl. Yeah, even if you're a female or you identify as feminine, I still see, like, um, bringing a gift. Like, you like to give gifts. Like, gift giving is a part of the love language you have and um on this first date you're very like you're just a romantic person there's a lot of expectations and yeah I think person a if you identify as person a I because this one feels a lot more split uh if you identify as person a I think you're a little bit like is this a player like I think you think person b is a bit of a player because they're so open-hearted and I think person B can be a player but I don't think they're a player in this instance I think their intentions are always genuine when they do this this just may be a person I told you with this dualistic nature this may be a person who falls in love a lot yeah I get this with person B that this person may fall in love a lot but this is your future spouse so with that I want to say that um just because someone has fallen in love a lot uh you can fall in love for the last time you know what I mean for the first last time like this is the first time they've fallen in love with you but it's the last time they'll ever fall in love with someone and I think that's kind of the energy I'm getting here where they are kind of a lover this person be but this is the last time they will fall in love with someone this is like their first last time falling in love so it's kind of still romantic for them um I do see this being a very 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 romantic date so candlelight dinners um theaters I see even like lantern, like a lantern festival with this dolphin spirit or something with like a beautiful sunset or artwork. Something about it is going to be, it's going to be romantic. Like this first date is romantic. So let's see more about pile number fours. I don't like these, so we're going to keep going. Pile fours, first date, their future spouse. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I do get the energy of, um, yeah, person B might have been a player in the past and not a, this is, this person B, this is interesting because they're not your typical player. They're not someone who, um, 
goes into things intending to use people. This person, person B, is not a user. They just have a lot of love. Um, this might have been someone who is was or has considered polyamory before, dating more than being in love with more than one person. Um, or I'm even getting for some of them, they may have been in an open marriage for a while. Or something about their uh, their loving is very different than the norm very different than the norm and um because of that i think person a whoever you are is, uh if that's you or your future spouse is kind of like is this person like i just feel that this person b is very kind of zany and different they just have different mentalities different ways of being and that kind of strikes person a uh the wrong way is like i don't know if i can tr like is this person going to be genuine with my heart? Because maybe you're a monogamist, right? You're someone who only wants one partner and um, you're not interested in sharing your partner. Well, that would be different for you to be with someone who has previously been in open relationships. But yeah, this person, uh, I feel like this date, this first date, you'll know this person won't hide anything from you. So I do get that person B is not a liar. Yeah, they may not be traditional. They may not do things the traditional route. They may um, have a lot of love to give and be a person who loves all people and all that stuff, but they're not a liar. So they will tell you. Okay, for some of you, they will. For some of you, they'll kind of hold it back at first, I think, because they don't want to scare you off. But for a good chunk of you, they will tell you the truth that they've um, either they've dated people of the same sex or they've done certain things. Like, they won't try and hide anything. I also don't think they might... For some of you, they'll outwardly just tell you. They'll say on this first date, like, listen, I've, you know, I've dated other girls before or other guys before. I've dated um, multiple people at the same time before. But for some of you, they won't tell you right away. Um, and I think that's just because they don't want to be judged right away, which is why they choose to keep it back because they are so loving that they'll just kind of, um, they'll wait for you to ask. But yeah, this first date, I think I'm getting with this keep an open mind is keep an open mind about who this person is because I think this is someone you can really jump the gun on judging because of their past or uh, just how loving they are that you would kind of miss out on them. Yeah, I'm hearing miss out on them, miss out on all that they can offer. Because again, someone can um, be polyamorous but then choose to settle down with one person. Like this and that are true. I just keep being drawn to this card again. And this dolphin call, because dolphins are so majestic and, um, you know, they're, they're very, uh, they're very intelligent, but they live in a very social way. I'm, I'm not quite sure how they mate, but I don't think they're monogamous for sure. I don't think they're monogamous, but, uh, they can be, I think so. Like I, I'm bringing John to this one story I read. This is totally random, but there's a story I read about a dolphin who was really attached to its trainer and his trainer used to like this is a little graphic, maybe like skip 10 seconds forward if you don't want to hear this, but its owner would kind of like jerk it, jerk off this dolphin. So that way it would like perform tricks or like they could study it. But the point was that this dolphin was basically in love with this human. And so when the human trainer left or couldn't get funding anymore and the project was closed down, the dolphin committed suicide. Okay. So like, even though the dolphins should be social and like all these things, this dolphin, like that particular dolphin was obviously so dedicated to its uh, trainer or owner that when the owner left, it literally killed itself. Not saying that's the energy here, but I'm just saying that like, just because dolphins are social and playful and all that things doesn't mean they can't also be devoted. I think that's the same energy for your person in your first date. I also get the energy. You may run into one of um, this person's exes on this first date or um, something about this is like you run into one, you may run into someone they've had um, a romantic connection with and um, you, I just get person A kind of wondering if this is a good idea because of that. Um, but this person, I think, can definitely offer you security. Uh, not Maybe not in the traditional sense that you would uh, assume, but I do get the energy that they, yeah, they won't lie to you, okay? They may not be always so forthcoming with everything that um, has gone on in their life, all the choices they made, but if you ask them a question, this is not the person to lie, Okay, um, yeah, no, they're very honest. So let's see more about this first date. The sun, yeah. And sextile, yeah, opportunity. Yeah, see, I don't think you will... Um, Spirit wants you to keep an open mind because I think this person is just um, either different from your usual type, which we get with that keep an open mind, or... Um, how they are is just not really something maybe that you, person A, would have ever thought they would have dated or that this person is too open or different. But, like, this is, um, this is your future spouse. So 
I think something about you two works. And this is not this is not the case of opposites attract. In fact, I'm hearing this is more a case of um like a very closed heart meets the most open heart you could. This is more a case of balance. Yes. Okay. This is more a case of balancing that out. Um, so if you are the more protective of your heart and your like sexuality and stuff, um, being around this person who is maybe way more open with their sexuality or way more open with their, uh, heart or their relationships or people they've dated will be, uh, slightly challenging for you. Yeah, it'll feel slightly challenging, but this is an opportunity for you to expand your heart if you're this person. Likewise, if you're the lover, this is a chance for you to um, understand purity, understand what a commitment looks like, understand what a, a single connection looks like. And that, that, can, that can be fulfilling too, right? This is a case of understanding different sides of a coin that you've never thought you would understand before because you're just inherently different. Likewise, someone may be like very religious and someone may be very open with their religions. Yeah. But you can actually quell the demons or the fears that drive this. So I'm going to read the shadow attributes, which I haven't done for, for the previous piles, but I feel like it's pertinent to this one. So the shadow attribute of virgin is a fear of intimate union, okay? And I think that's true. Like being intimate may be something that kind of scares you or maybe you've had bad experiences or um, just something you can get really close to. Like maybe you love pick a card readings if you're person A, okay? But you just can't actually get uh, have a close relationship with anyone. That's why part of the virgin is you're, you're away from people. They're, they don't have access to your heart or to your body. They don't have access to you. Now, the lover's shadow attribute is obsessive passion that harms others, self-destructive devotion. You see, so this is the opposite of it, where you don't let people access you and get close to your heart. This person um, will can do it to an obsessive degree that maybe harms the people around them because they are unable to commit. And this is, again, not a bad thing. And it's interesting that I'm getting so much more about uh, the energy of each of you than I am the date itself. Because I feel like this is part of the date, is encountering these differences that you have and sort of being hesitant to jump further in because you're... You're not sure if this person can, if you're person A, you're not sure if this person can offer you security. And if you're person B, you're not sure necessarily if you can, um, I want to say commit, honestly. Like your, your future spouse may not be sure on the first date if they can be a serious relationship. In fact, I'm hearing for some of you, you may be your future spouse's first and only serious relationship. Like they didn't have a serious relationship before you. You're the first one and you're the only one that they will have a serious relationship with. Anything else I'm seeing about this first date? Two, two, two. I want to get one more of these. It does feel, again, I do get the sense that this is a very romantic first date because person B really knows how to romance someone. So uh, this isn't a date where you're you're gonna feel wooed, and I think that's part of your part of person A's apprehension is like this person is. Too, I'm hearing almost too good, right? You're too good at what you do. You're too good at making me uh, feel special or making this all feel romantic. You know what I'm getting for this lover's card? I, I have to say it because it just keeps coming to mind. For this lover's card, I'm sort of getting Harry Styles energy. Now, if you know One Direction or you just know Harry Styles because he's pretty big at this point, and if you don't, that's fine. Harry Styles is sort of a lover of all, you know, and like he's not bisexual, but might be bisexual. He's never really defined it, but he's just like a lover, a lover, a lover, a lover. And um, that can be hard because I think he, I think in one of his albums, he admits he like cheated on a girlfriend or something. And so um, this loving energy can rub person A, the virgin in the wrong way. And um, okay, but yeah, I don't think you really need to worry too much because this, this is like, this first date would kind of be a turning point for your person where they realize they actually want to set roots down with someone or maybe they're just at a point in their life where they're ready to set down roots with someone. But I don't think you have to worry. This first date will, I think, confirm for person B that they're uh, almost like ready to leave behind the game or leave behind uh, loving everyone and kind of just commit to one person which is different for them. I definitely feel like that's different for them. That's not how they've normally done things. And for the virgin, this is kind of, or person A, this is more of like, maybe I'm ready to uproot myself a little bit and, and risk, right? Fear of intimate union. That's your shadow attribute. Risk 
a relationship with someone who is maybe different than I thought. You know, maybe I'm really used to serious, sturdy types, but maybe commitment can come in a different box. That's what I'm hearing. Commitment can come in a different box. It doesn't have to come in something that I've always known it to be. Yeah, so I do feel a lot of anxiety for person A regarding this date and just the general treatment. And for person B, I think there's also anxiety because this is this is a change for both of you. For person A, it's opening up more of your um, body or your heart to be a little different than normal. And for person B, this is... Um, potentially being committed to someone which is something they've never they haven't really done before so in both cases I do feel an opening of the mind of what has always been and maybe looking at doing something in a different manner and that is what connects you to so this first date will be romantic you will I think have a good time but again I think in the back of your head whether it's because you run into one of their exes or you just kind of hear you hear something you've heard things about this person before I'm also getting that you could have heard things about this person before like oh that person's a player or oh that person you know they're a cheater they're a liar or they're all these things blah 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 but it's actually like getting to know each other for yourselves and seeing what you want from there because again just because you've always been some type of way or you've uh, always had some sort of character doesn't mean that always has to be who you are okay so even if you're a virgin up until this point you don't always have to be a virgin your whole life likewise if you've been a player and you've slept with lots of people your whole life or had very more casual relationships that doesn't mean you can't commit to one person and spend the rest of your life very happy so this first date will definitely be um romantic it will be romantic but it will also be challenging because you just think you're so different but if you keep an open mind which is, I think this is why that's the energy of this card I think you can have a very good time and you'll find that you connect on more levels than you might have thought am I seeing anything else yeah and I just see after this date maybe you're calling your friends and you're like I don't know like I, I liked it this was really nice but this person is almost like too good at what they do or I just felt like I was being wooed or I was being played or or something like that like something about this person B has kind of player player energy to it but they're not a player okay they are not a player they're very honest and a player um you know a player plays people you don't know you're being you're being played but you don't know it this person would never do that they're not like like, like I said I get Harry Styles energy this person wouldn't intentionally play anyone they they try to be as honest as they can with people and as upfront about who they are um as possible without uh risking being judged too heavily but yeah you may call your friends after and be like I don't know I don't know about this but uh you will yeah, there may be even a break after this first date I'm seeing as you don't think you're similar enough or you don't think that you guys line up, but something will bring you guys back together, that's for sure. And I think that might be running into each other or something, but something will bring you guys back together if there is a break between your first and your second date. But you will um, you will have an expansive mind. You will have a, a, a nice date, though. It'll be nice. It's not anything wrong with it. It's just thinking maybe we're too different to um, fall in love or be committed or be committed to each other in the same way, but you'll find that you end up balancing each other out where it's exactly what you need because person A needs to be pulled out a little more and person B actually needs to um, be a little more committed, be a little more uh, serious and intentional with their commitments and that's what this connection will bring out. And this is your future spouse, so it obviously works out and you get married and um, we hope that you your future spouse is the person you're with forever. And that you die happy and all that. But this is the first date, so that is what I'm seeing for your state. I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you did, comment down below. I know it might not have sounded pleasant to the ears, but hopefully you still see the, uh, the potential of a connection like this. Yeah. But other than that, if you enjoyed the reading, uh, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.